tonight we're gonna check out a knife I may need a little help with. I may need your help deciding whether I really, really like it or I'm gonna have to not like it. I like it for what I'm gonna use it for. You gotta decide if you're gonna be able to like it for what you're gonna use it for, especially you heavy used user guys. So let's get into this. Please, please, hold. Jimmy Slash, Jimmy Slash, Jimmy, please, please, hold. Please, 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 hold for Jimmy Slash. All right, so let's look at this CRKT, obviously. And I want to thank smkw.com for, for, for providing this. They're the awesome folks. Get down there, use my link, bring some money into the channel. Channel money for you guys for PIF and stuff. So that's what the link is for. I'm not using it for personal use. I'm using it to get knives out to the, to the public. So thank you to them, good folks. And they just changed their shipping rules, so check that out too. All right, let's get into this. This is the CRKT Hair Scale. Check this out here. Let me grab my glasses so I know what I'm looking at here. All right, have a look see there. Very, very cool blade. I love the blade. Love that spear point blade on that thing. Have a look. Have a look. You already can tell what's going to be the controversial part of this knife because the other parts of this knife are awesome. Let's get into the non controversial parts first. So, we're going to look at this blade. You got one, two, three, about three. What is that? Like one, two, three, about three and a quarter inches of that D2 steel there. Now, I know some people are kind of like tired of D2. I have a buddy, he's just kind of like, eh, man, on D2. No, I was thinking, D2 is kind of like, it's kind of like the Steve Buscemi of steel. He's in everything, and you don't really appreciate him because you see him so much. But really, <laughs> D2, that's done right, is a pretty good steel. I mean, it's good tool steel, it's hard. You're gonna have to take a little bit of care of it to make sure it doesn't rust up on you, so. Leaving it in your truck as a truck knife may not be the best idea. Although I did have a D2. So I had a D2 steel blade in my truck for a while. As a truck blade, and it did get a little little spot here and there of rust here and there on it. But I'm going to be honest, I had an M390 blade in my truck too. And it started to rust up a little bit. So I don't know. I wouldn't go too harshly on the D2. It's a good steel. And check that out. Man, I love this blade. Let's see how sharp it came. Belly hair sharp? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't laugh. Ah, ow. ow. <laughs> Don't laugh while you're doing the belly hair. All right, let's see. I'll let you all see a visual of how sharp this thing came. Let me grab a coupon. Can you guess the coupon? Did you guess sport clips? Look at that. That's right out the box. Now, I'll tell you what, I got this in hand at Smoky Mountain, and just that's what really sold me on it. It's just a great, great way it feels. I love these thumb studs. They're perfect. Left-handed and right-handed. You know, it's weird. I'm not really good at thumb studs on my right hand. I don't know why, but this one works just fine. Okay, let's get into the one of the major selling points of this knife, and that is the deadbolt lock. Remember last year, I beat the mess out of that seismic. And that thing kept coming. Could not kill the seismic with that deadbolt lock on it. And it really sold me on that lock. I love this lock. I don't, it is right up there with the triad lock as far as my favorites. And just the lock I would trust to take this out and just have to use it repeatedly in a hard use situation. With that D2 steel and that lock, this is a hard use knife. I see a lot of people talking about hard use knives and you know they're coming up with non triad locks non non uh deadbolt locks and man for those two anything hard use those two are gonna be awesome of course the, the well done access lock that's a good one but this deadbolt lock is what we're talking about and you're not gonna go wrong you're not gonna kill it your hand is gonna go out before you can kill this lock i tried to kill that that seismic last year and I'm going to tell you, as strong as I am, which I'm not super strong, but I'm strong enough to do some damage to a knife, and I couldn't kill it. I was hammering with it, smashing with it. Go check that video out. 
And that deadbolt lock is just amazing. That's a great, great lock. A very, very secure locking system. All right, so now we're gonna do, you got the Grivix handle. The thing is, you only got right hand tip up carry on this thing, which this feels more like a, a knife that you're gonna use. So you lefties, you're gonna carry it in your pocket like this. You're gonna reach down like that and you're opening it like that. Not really an issue. Not too horrible an issue for you. You just gotta get used to it. Kinda like getting used to a liner lock, how you had it in your position, in your pocket. So that's not a big deal. The problem I'm having is the paris, the paracord wrap on this. And here's the reason. For me, I'm gonna carry this in, in my hand. I'm gonna use it to open up boxes. I'm gonna use it to, you know, cut off a piece of wiener or something or some cheese in the truck or whatnot. And then we'll wipe down the blade and it's all going to be good. Now, some of you guys are out there, and maybe girls, ladies, women, folks. I am women here. No, no. You know what I'm saying? Ladies. <laughs> some of you are going to be out there as using this as a hunting knife or using this as a hard use knife with your hands getting all sweaty and maybe gunky and oily and bloody and stuff that's getting on this and I just don't see how in the world you're going to keep this anywhere clean with that with, unable to okay I'm just going to wipe it down and take some alcohol wipe it down it's not going to get that paracord clean then you're going to get up there in the middle there then you're going to get up there in the middle and they got the little bitty holes where the paracord goes and all that's going to get all gunked up with sweat and blood and mud and beer, whatever, you know, all the Johnny Cash things. And how are you going to get that out of there? And that's my one issue with this knife. I like it. I like it for me, for what I'm going to use it for. And because I don't mind working with paracord, I think if I took this on some kind of field trip out into the woods and used it for, you know, a good weekend or something, and it did get all gunky, I wouldn't have a problem releasing all this and rewrapping it because you know i like colors and i'll probably rewrap this in pink anyways or red white and blue i don't know i don't like the tan the tan just makes it bland but for the people that are out there doing the real stuff see the thing is this thing will hold up to the real stuff this thing will hold up to the cutting and the chopping and the stabbing and the whittling and whatever you need to do you know skinning that lock's gonna be awesome. The D2 is gonna be awesome. And then you're gonna get down here and I think this is gonna throw some people off with that paracord. But I might be wrong. Are you willing to disassemble this thing every time you should use it in that situation? Or you just want something that you can wipe down, maybe blow some air through, blow some water streaming through and get all the gunk out? And this is not that knife. And which is not hurtful because if you're, I'd say 99% of this, this knife is gonna be awesome. 99% of it, you can take this out into the warehouse. You're going to break down some boxes with it. Super, super comfortable. Super comfortable like that. Just, you got that right there. That's exactly the kind of leverage you need. That three and a quarter inch blade just gives you what kind you need. But if you're using this out in the woods, which the paracord kind of implies you're going to be using it out in kind of a survivalist situation, maybe a camping situation, then it kind of loses a lot of its appeal because of the way it's going to take to clean this thing. It's going to take an effort to clean this. And if you're going to take it apart and take that paracord apart and wash all the pieces out, then that's going to take a lot of effort too. So you're going from the CRKT has that one where it disassembles by itself kind of thing. I think I have one of those here somewhere. Where is that? That's not it. I'm going to ruin the video by looking at stuff. All right, we're not going to do that. But anyways, I have the one where it kind of disassembles the pivot. And that makes good use of the, like a field stripping thing. But this, like I was talking to my buddy, he said it feels kind of gimmicky as far as what this is for. And I don't know. I think you could roll up that much 550 cord and jam it into your, your sock. And it would make more sense than to wrap this thing in 550 because you're just going to, you're going to, you're going to take away all the food prep from this you're gonna food prep something one time with this because you're gonna get meat particles or blood or you know vegetable juices and stuff on your hand and then what are you gonna do the next time you got to use this it's always gonna have those germies in there 
up in those cracks and stuff. So I like this knife for my use. I think most of you, especially like, you know, you the guys that are working in factories or working in a warehouse or teachers or lawyers, but not the lawyer part where you go out and do stuff. The lawyer part where you're lawyering in your office or whatever. You know, that kind of worker is, is not going to have a problem with this. The, the kind of worker that may have an issue is going to be the guy or, that wants to use this as a field knife, as some kind of prep knife, as some kind of survivalist blade. And the, the sad thing is this thing, the blade or the lock on this thing and the blade are going to hold up to that kind of use. And the paracord just kind of fights the, the purpose of, of what it should be used for. Or what it could be used for ultimately this thing is awesome see now let's see if i can bring this one out here no nope, that's not that one that's a good knife too i need to review <laughs> all right hold on hold on hold your horses I've gotta find it now that i made a point all right so here we go now you take see i like this i like the thumb studs you take this out in the field you bloody it up you gunk it up you mud it up go blow some air through there run some water through there getting your q-tips and it's, it's cleaned up but these little strands of you know cord and stuff are going to be impossible to clean properly to make man this is a great knife too i didn't mean to talk bad about the seismic oh man oh that knife fits good in hand and as good as this fits in hand as good as that feels you should get one of those and get see this feels a little bit just a little bit better the way it feels just a tiny bit better like a 98 percent to 100 percent but this thing is the one i would take because i don't have to worry about the paracord wrap getting all gunked up i want to go out and slaughter a field full of briskets with this and i just get home wash it out clean it out get my q-tips out gunk it up or ungunk it and then bam we're good to go this is a great knife by the way y'all all these deadbolt knives are amazing. All right, so let me know what you think down there. Am I way off? Am, you know, am I losing my mind? Am I losing my, have I, have I stepped out? Because you guys are the ones that really know how to get out there in the fields. There are a bunch of y'all in the group that kind of put your knives to the test like that and, and, and way more than I've ever done or will ever do. Let's test that pocket clip. Just because, just because I have a, Bad feeling. Yeah, it's not too bad to catch on those cords. So it's going to stay in your pocket out in the woods. And you could wrap that in like orange cord and you could find it. Yeah, the pear cord makes it a little bit trickier to get into your pocket. But it's not horrible. So it's not, not a bad, bad thing. Not a bad, bad pocket clip situation. I love this knife. If it wasn't for the pear cord, I would definitely give it, you know, the A plus rating. With the paracord, with the way I'm going to use it, still going to give it like a B, B-ish, right in that 85%, right there. You should have done that extra credit, and the teacher would have gave you some, you know, maybe that B plus, maybe jump, jump to 88. But right now, I'm going to give this like an 85. Without the paracord, if this was all solid scales, and with a good, like, lanyard hold, this would have been like a 95. I just love the thumb studs, love the deadbolt, love that spear point blade love everything about this knife and for me i i really really like it for you you real knife using folks let me know what you think i'm, I'm thinking it's kind of dropped this way down you know it's like finding out that you plagiarized half your paper and you're going to drop down to a, a d plus or something but i don't know i might not be like that you might be a different kind of teacher you might not be played you know he just plagiarized but he meant to cite his sources kind of thing <laughs> I don't know how I've lost you. It's really, really a weird time right now. I'm just, I'm upset. I can't tell you why I'm upset, but just right in the middle of my video. Just, just, but anyways, but I'm not upset at you. And I'm not upset at the knife. Let's see. And I'm not upset at my energy drink. Oh, okay. Back here. Check this out. Leave a comment down there. Let me know what you think. Normal use folks like me, let me know what you think. Hard use guys. Let me know what you think, ladies too. I think that's it. And I'll talk to y'all later.